Deborah's on, on this uh, end of it, but thank you to Deborah as well for allowing me to be a part of your day. Um, I wanted to have the opportunity to meet with you guys today to talk about leadership, but the new angle of leadership. So let me just give a little bit of background here. Um, my name is McCall Hall. I work with the University of Southern California in the athletic department, as Scott mentioned. And this past year, year and a half, has been a huge pivot for our uh, organization. I'm sure a lot of the organizations you guys all work with. And one of the things that I, I just felt strongly about as I was looking pat, back at the other script conferences and whatnot, um, I could talk all day about the importance of athletes giving back. I think we all know that athletes are um, role models in our community and they do amazing and great work. And I'll show you guys a couple of uh, images of, of what we do in the community. But I think that it's best that we have a conversation um, in, in a roundhouse about best practices for leadership in this era and in this world that we're living in that is very much digital. Um, I'm not quite sure of everyone's background on this call and on this Zoom, but I would imagine that at a macro level, a lot of us are, are, are um, having to work through the process with our organizations at a macro level of how to keep our, our teams connected, how to ensure that people are, are feeling as motivated as possible um, to, to do their job, which is to serve. I think all of us represent organizations and interests about giving back, but if we're not um, providing our staff, if we're not providing uh, volunteers, if we're not providing people um, ways to feel like they're truly a part of the team and uh, valued because of the distance, because of, of, of this, um, you know, the socially distant world that we live in, and, and we probably will still have a hybrid version of moving forward. I just think it's important to think about a couple of ways to stay in touch with people and stay connected. Um, again, I'm not sure if you guys are um, all leading your organizations, but I, I just have a couple of tips and tricks and I would love to hear from you guys uh, about that. And one of the reasons why I felt so strongly about creating this, um, this abstract and, and having this discussion is because we work with a lot of different organizations and I, I actually learned a lot from CEOs and you know, executive directors of organizations about how did they keep their teams motivated during this time. But even though you know, we've gotten through this, this at least strongest wave of, of COVID-19, uh, a lot of organizations are still leaning into this hybrid model of uh, working from home and, and providing their staff the opportunity to do their jobs um, and not necessarily be in an office every day. But if we're gonna continue that trend, I do think it's important that we have some tools and resources to help us stay as connected as possible. So Scott, is it okay um, to share the screen? I have a document, well, I have two documents uh, and, and I'm gonna save one of them for the breakout room, but uh, is it okay to, to share the screen here? I'm sorry, Scott, I can't hear yeah, you. Yes, you should be all set. You should be all okay. set to share the screen. And apologies, the only blue that I own, Scott and I joked about it, the only blue that I own is a denim blue jacket. I thought I had more blue than that, but I only have- You'll denim. appreciate my blue, the Seahawks blue. Yes, and I, I thought I had a Seahawks shirt, but it's not it's not royal blue. This is the closest thing I have to royal. So forgive, forgive the color choice, but this is as blue as I could get as a Trojan. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and show you guys my screen and I've got a couple of uh, tips. Um, for us as we move forward. And hopefully what I have is not redundant. And um, if it is, like I said, I would love to open up the floor um, to hear how you guys have, have stayed uh, connected to your leadership or if you're a, a member of your leadership team with your organization, what are ways that you've stayed connected to your staff to keep them empowered? So that's just our intro page. Like I said, I just wanted to share with you guys that what I do for a living I work with the USC athletic department and we give back to the community in a, in a myriad of ways with our student athletes really being at the forefront of, of what we do. Um, people like Scott, they're uh, wonderful supporters of ours and, and we really look to organizations um, to, to partner and find ways to address social issues and, and social causes and bring our student athletes in to, to help be a catalyst for that change. 
um, due to the past year, everything looks different. This is what I would consider to be the, the good old days of community impact. Um, but you know, because of, of COVID-19, we had to make some huge pivots. So I wanna just go over some of the best practices that I learned over the course of this year. Oh, and I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with these organizations, but these are some of the organizations that we have worked with in the past and work with on a more consistent basis. Uh, the organization we work with the most and in, in, in intersect with the most would be the Los Angeles Unified School District. Um, and again, in the breakout room, if you guys wanna learn more about what we do in the community, I would be happy to um, answer those questions. Uh, but this is just a little bit of background about USC athletics and, and who we serve and who we give to. And this is just a smidgen. Um, there are a lot of organizations that we serve. So let's move forward to the topic at hand and that is leading through the lens of pivot to digital leadership. Just by a show of hands, um, I think I can see a fair amount of people. Uh, how many folks assume a leadership role within your organization, just by a show of hands. Um, executive directors, uh, directors, are there any, any leaders um, within your actual organizations by a show of hands? Okay, I see a couple of folks, awesome. And if, and if, you're, if you don't consider yourself to be a leader within your organization, number one, you definitely are, um, but Again, hopefully, if, if you are if you don't consider yourself to be that, maybe these are things that you can take back to your leadership as a recommendation uh, to keep you guys a little bit more connected moving forward. Um, so today's agenda, I wanted to just go over a couple of slides that I made for you guys with some recommendations and tools uh, for um, three ways to lead and amplify your team via digital leadership. Obviously, um, when you're inside of an office space every day, uh, and you're working with your teams, especially if you're working at social um, social agencies, um, it's it's easy to kind of get a, a feel for how everybody's doing, how everybody's um, coping. Because at the end of the day, our staff is an extension of of us as leaders. In the sports world, we say that we're an extension of the coach, right? Players are the extension of the coach. Um, in in the in the world of of social change those who are uh, the social workers and, and handling um, our communities at a micro level. We, those are the people that we really have to make sure have the, the tools that they need, but everything starts at the top. And one thing I'll give a lot of credit to um, within USC Athletics, uh, our newest athletic director, I, I truly believe did a wonderful job this year in making sure that we felt as connected as possible um, through digital leadership. He couldn't see us every day, but I can't say that I went more than maybe three days, maybe maybe four, without having a form of communication uh, or motivation come from our athletic director. Uh, and I have to give him a lot of credit. And moving outside of the, the, the world of USC athletics, I think that we've done a, or excuse me, I think a lot of organizations have done a wonderful job of keeping their staffs motivated um, and empower it through this time. But again, the, 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 the feeling and the sentiment that I'm getting and just what we're doing around USC Athletics and a lot of other organizations, this hybrid model will continue where people will work from home and, and, and uh, only see each other when they go into that office space, but they'll be more independent. So some of the things I wanna talk about today, uh, social media and internal highlighting, uh, making sure that we're using our, our social media platforms to uh, ensure that our staff feels like more than a number. We, we, we understand the work that has to be done, but we don't want folks to feel like they're just coming in and they are voiceless, nameless, faceless. We really wanna put faces to names and, and, and highlight them in a cool way. Um, the next topic is called state of the, it could be state of the union, state of the agency, whatever, whatever state you guys wanna update your staff on. Um, I want to just speak to speak to that and, and a couple of things you guys should consider. Um, the next being office hours, even though we're not in an office, it is important to have that time to drop in with your with your staff and with those who are working on 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 the behalf of your organizations. And so I have a couple of apps that I wanted to share with you guys that will help uh, make your make you more accessible. And also, if you are not the at, at a level where you necessarily have an assistant or somebody handling your calendar. 
it's a luxury, but a lot of us just don't have that. And it doesn't mean that um, we don't want to be of service, be of help and be accessible. We just don't have somebody kind of controlling that calendar. So uh, I have a, a couple of apps I wanted to share. And then the bonus that I, I mentioned, um, I have virtual meeting icebreakers that I will put uh, as an attachment in the breakout room and we'll actually, we, we can play some of those. But I didn't want to take up too much time with virtual icebreakers uh, today, just because I know we, we don't have a whole lot of time. So moving forward. Um, so on this slide, I have a couple of examples of what I think makes for a great um, employee highlight. So these are, these are generic, um, not necessarily what we use within uh, USC Athletics, but I wanted to find you know, some different types. But uh, if your organizations don't have um, social media such as Instagram or Facebook, I would strongly encourage you guys to do that. It's not just for the folks who, who follow your organizations. Um, it's also for the employees that you guys have. Uh, the fact that they can be a part of something or follow an organization on their phone and feel like they're connected um, to their organization means the world. Uh, because you want to make sure that people who whether they're making purchases or whether they're going to your organizations for resources, um, know that they're, they're actual human beings that care. And in this world of digital, human beings can be hard to come by. So um, I wanted to show you guys a few templates of, of what I think are wonderful uh, employee spotlights that you guys can utilize on your social media platforms. Um, one thing I will mention if you guys have the luxury of, and I didn't, I didn't add this to the slides, I didn't want to make it too wordy here, but if you guys have a graphic designer, this might be something that you want to put on your, on your graphic designer's calendar today. Um, sit down with them or next week and say, look, I want to make a template for Facebook, for Instagram. Um, we're going forward uh, at least every other week. I want to highlight the people that work within our within our organization, and I want to have something that that hits on um, their interests, maybe outside of work, or what they do great, or why people should reach out to them personally. But I want you guys to consider um, sitting down with your graphic designer if you have one. If you don't have one, that's also fine. Um, and I didn't list it here, but the best website, in my opinion, for making social media templates. If you guys are looking to um, incorporate social media in what you do, and I do highly encourage that as a website, a website called Canva. If you guys go on canva.com right now, you can make all of these different kinds of templates and have them saved to your, to your um, hard drive. And you can create these employee spotlights yourself if you'd like to. Um, but if you have a graphic designer, they can whip something up that makes it really cool and interactive and shows your employees in the, in the best of light. And again, I know this sounds a little bit like HR and I thought this was about you know, social change, but if you're not sewing into the people that are supporting your agency and, and, and really being the face of your agency, um, you're not gonna see a whole lot of change if, if you're not really sewing into them. And like I said, I've just been blessed and fortunate to, to work with an organization that really does a, a great job of it. And to me, that's what made the difference uh, for us in this past year to maintain a, a high level of, um, of productivity and, and success. So if you guys have a graphic designer, I would encourage you to um, find a way to highlight your employees in weekly or bi-weekly online so that they feel like they're a part of the team and that they're not just a number. And like I said, uh, a wonderful platform that I've used to, to do that for other things is canva.com. But you can use Canva or your graphic designer um, to make these templates. But they really do, they go a long way in showing your appreciation for your staff. And while I'm rambling here, uh, does anyone have a question? Because I, I don't think I can see the chat, but does anyone have a question? I think if, if anyone does, I think Scott can alert me. But if you do have questions, let me know. And at the end, we can also um, go over some questions here. Uh, the next thing I wanted to share um, is the state of the. So we have an internal letter that goes out every Friday at two o'clock. Every Friday at two o'clock, I get an email from our athletic director highlighting everything great that happened during the week. And I know it sounds a little hokey um, to do that, but for me, it 
I take a lot, I have a lot of value for that, that communication from our athletic director um, because I, you know, if you don't have the opportunity to see them every day, this is where you get all of your information that's pertinent and important for the week, whether it's, you know, COVID testing updates or whatever the case may be. Um, having that month, that, that weekly or bi-weekly update uh, goes a long way. Um, a couple of things that I've seen from other organizations, not necessarily through USC, uh, but there was another agency where their CEO for a social change agency um, did a, a special monthly video update for their staff uh, that goes over, you know, all the highlights and showcasing all the work that they've been able to do. And it's something that they actually uh, made mandatory and put on their calendars. So, um, you know, every, every, uh, first Monday of the month, they would, you know, have this special kind of state of the union um, from their, their CEO. And it really helped keep people, uh, number one, just knowledgeable about what's going on within the organizations. I think a lot of times we're so fragmented, we don't, we don't really get that, that update. But consistency is key. And having that one thing that you really enjoy, whether it's writing or if it's video, but you want to create um, a space for your staff to, to see you as a leader at least, I would say once a month, like a big thing once a month. But if it's something that you can do every Friday at two o'clock, I would say do it because the more communication they have, the more faith they have in you as a leader and, and the more they wanna go through the wall for you as a leader. Um, but like I said, these, these are, um, tools that we've used internally, but I've also noticed with a lot of the agencies we partner with, their CEOs and, and high level leaders within their organizations are using these. And again, if, if you're a part of an organization um, where you're looking to your leadership on how to stay more connected, these are things that you might want to send in a recommendation box or shoot over in an email um, because you guys need to know what's going on within your organizations. Um, so that you can go out and, and represent them in the best way. Um, let's see. And my third and final um, recommendation, I don't have examples, uh, screenshots of these apps. Um, it's kind of hard to get them all on one page, but these are uh, scheduling apps for meetings. And my personal favorite, and I actually use this all the time, is called Calendly. Uh, the Calendly app is, for me, vital. So at least four times a week, I do uh, informational interviews with uh, recent college graduates who want to work in the sports industry. Um, going back and forth on email is a little bit of a challenge for me sometimes uh, with scheduling. And so I've found that using this app, they can go to my profile and just select a time when they want to speak with me and I get that, that alert and same day reminder to log on to my Zoom and have these meetings and communications. Um, another one that I've found is effective is Doodle. Uh, it's not as um, it's not as one-sided. Uh, you do have to engage a little bit more with providing your available times with Doodle, but it's it's a pretty effective tool. Um, the other one that I think is closest to the Calendly app uh, in functionality and and and. Uh, user engagement is you can book me, you can book dot me. And the good thing about you can book dot me and the Calendly app is that you can, you can connect it to your Google calendar. So if you connect that app, it gets synced to your phone and your calendars. And again, there are organizations where, you know, your leadership has uh, assistance and this, that, and the third. But I think for a lot of us that are, are working um, with more grassroots organizations, we want to be efficient with our time. We want to be um, effective with our time. And, and this is certainly a, a way to do that uh, or by using these apps. And then another app is called TimeTap. I don't have a lot of uh, experience with TimeTap, but it's another great application. Um, but one of the big things that I've, I've had experience with with the Calendly app, not just for myself, um, but with another CEO of an organization, um, every week um, on Fridays, they actually allow their staff to um, just book office hours, essentially. With, when you're inside of an office, it's easy to swing by somebody's door and say, hey, can I, can I grab 15 minutes with you? It's much simpler to do it. But now that we're in this digital space, it's a little bit harder to have that time to even ask. And also it's intimidating. 
I don't know about you guys, but it's hard to walk up to someone and say, hey, I have a little bit of a concern um, and I, I would love, you know, 30 minutes of your time to just kind of go over what I'm thinking. Um, with the Calendly app, what I love is that somebody can book me, write the description of what's going on, add attachments, whatever the case may be, so that I'm prepared for our conversation whenever that date comes up. Um, so like I said, if you guys are uh, leaders within your organization with a, lot of, with a lot on your plate, but you feel the need to stay connected to your staff, um, this is certainly something that I would encourage you guys to get onto your phones, your, your laptops, but incorporate that into your day-to-day uh, -day, um, functions. Because the more accessibility you have to me as a leader, like I said, the, the harder your staff will work um, for you and for the cause that you guys represent. And that's what it's all about. We just wanna give people uh, the agency and empowerment to go out and continue to do the work that really means the most in our communities. Um, and like I said, I have another uh, workbook for you guys. And um, before we end, I'll, my contact info is here. And if you actually want to uh, talk a little bit more in depth about these tools and how to use them, um, my Calendly is at the bottom. It's just calend calendly.com in my name. And you can literally go there right now and book a time with me to, to speak. And I only, like I said, I only set mine up on, on Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, earlier in the week, I don't really um, do these kind of, of uh, meetings and whatnot, but I make myself available on Thursdays and Fridays and, uh, you know, recent college grads uh, take up these slots quite a bit because they, they all have questions about getting into the sports agency or into the sports business. Um, but I've found it to be uh, a great tool to just provide that access for communication in a less daunting and intimidating way in fashion. So um, I appreciate your guys' time. And again, I, if you guys have questions, this is the time um, to ask. And also, um, if anyone has a recommendation that I didn't share, uh, please, please, please either write it in the chat, and I'm going to stop sharing the screen here. Um, please write it in the chat or, uh, or just raise your hand. Nicole, could you do maybe just two minutes and talk about I mean, all these great tools you shared, but one of the things that Trojan Outreach has always done is introduce students from all over the world, all different kinds of backgrounds to community service work and kind of the beginning of social change for a, a lot of students, a lot of social awareness and beginning that. And so with coronavirus, that really changed the ability to do that. So using those tools, do you have an example from last year? that you could share where you said, okay, we can't do it in person, but here's what we're gonna to do to kind of create that same exposure. Oh yeah, I mean, when it comes to what we, what we had to do with um, USC and the athletic department in our, in our efforts, uh, when it comes to the digital space, um, a lot of digital town halls, virtual town halls and meet and greets. Um, one, one thing that we did most recently, um, we have a partnership that's starting up with an organization, organization called CASA which stands for Court Appointed Supervision, I think it's association. Um, they're based out of Orange County and they have foster youth all around Orange, Orange County. And on this particular day, we met with a foster youth um, down in Orange County and their CASA rep. And so we were able to create a, a Zoom room and kind of like party for that kid where we were able to do kind of interactive games with this young person who um, was at risk, absolutely at risk. And our players and student athletes were able to be a part of that Zoom. Um, when it comes to um, more uh, socially distant ways that we were able to, to pivot this year, um, we did a produce, uh, a produce and holiday gift um, drive at our, at our football stadium um, and used the drive-through method that I'm sure a lot of you guys saw during the pandemic, um, where we had cars physically drive up to receive items and resources. Um, from our student athletes and our student athletes, you know, stood outside and, and, and uh, went on the front lines and, and exposed themselves to the elements, if you will, uh, but in a very socially distant, distant way to provide resources. Um, but moving forward, our plans are actually going back to our traditional model where we will have um, on campus uh, programs, events and opportunities for the community to intersect with our with our um, student athletes. And one of the coolest uh, updates that we have this year, 
when it comes to our programming and what we're going to be bringing back to campus, um, we're partnering with an organization called Crystal Stairs, and we are going to sponsor their parent empowerment programs for the 2021, or excuse me, 20, yeah, 2021, 2022 year. And so we're gonna have um, parents that are part of the parent empowerment program at Crystal Stairs. Uh, their programs will be hosted at USC and our student athletes and student athlete parents will serve as guest speakers and moderators for these parent events that we'll have throughout the year. But yes, Scott, during, during the course of this year, a lot of the things that we did were very much based on Zoom. And I know that people have that Zoom fatigue, but our student athletes did a really wonderful job every time we had some kind of classroom visit with, uh, you know, with, with 50 kids in a room and in a Zoom. Our student athletes did a wonderful job of staying just as engaged as if they were in front of them inside of an auditorium. But this year, our, our student athletes served through a camera. Um, and like I said, even though it's different, I think it was just as impactful. Mm -hmm.